Introducing Thor Technologies. Who is Thor Technologies? Thor Technologies is a 100% Australian company who engineer, design and manufacture a premium range of power protection and filtration products. Thor Technology Training, How Power Works on the Grid, will explain what a spike and a surge is, as well as what causes them, effects on your valuable equipment, and how to pick a good surge protector and a few other interesting points. What is the difference between a spike and a surge? A spike is a sudden rise in voltage that lasts less than a millisecond. A surge is a rapid increase in voltage that lasts longer than a millisecond, basically burns or cooks your appliances. Spikes are short and sharp. Simply turning on a light switch generates a spike, while a surge is around a lot longer. They attack all sensitive electronics. MOVs. In all our products, we have a key part called an MOV. Metal Oxide Varista. An MOV works like a tightly wound little copper coil, so when a spike comes through it, the spike goes around and around and continues going around and around until it dissipates and loses its kick. Now focusing on a surge, a sudden rise in voltage that lasts longer than a millisecond. When a surge comes through, you don't hear a pop. It doesn't work like that. What happens is, everything just starts running hot. 18 months later, TVs packed up, fridge, washing machines packed up. Why? It's because everything is running hot. 230 volts to 275 volts is considered safe power. Why 230 volts and not Australian 240 volt supply? 230 volts is the European power grid supply. Electrical products manufactured today are made to operate in Europe and to meet European standards. So electrical products are designed to operate on a 230 volt supply. That is why anything running between 230 and 275 is acceptable and deemed safe. External interferences. External causes of interferences, like electrical utilities load sharing, cars crashing into power poles, or trees touching power lines, we have no control of. Look at this example where there is a tree growing. That tree, once grown and taller, and every time the wind blows, the branches touch the power lines. This connection creates and sends a surge through the power lines. The most severe cause of external interference by high voltage surging is from lightning. However, a direct lightning strike is statistically the least likely event to occur. The more common is lightning strikes some distance away that produce surges. Internal interferences. Number one culprit. Vacuum cleaners followed by air conditioners, bar heaters and anything with a robust motor. Fridge, freezer, washing machine, tumble dryer, all have motors in them. Have you experienced a time where you're watching TV and the fridge door closes or someone turns a light on? All of a sudden you see a squiggle across the TV. That squiggle is highlighting you've got polluted power coming along the same circuit. That's the only visual place that we can actually see that we are having interference. If you weren't watching TV at that time, you wouldn't know that you had an interruption or damaging power coming through. If someone is saying they have never had anything fail, electrical devices are actually suffering all the time, it's just we can't see it. Typical examples of interference from sewing machines, dishwashers, washing machines, just stopping mid-cycle, video streaming freezing or slowing down, pixelation on TVs, computers with data and file corruption warnings. How to pick a good surge protector. There are three main points to consider regardless of brand. One, joules. Joules is a measurement of energy a surge protector can absorb. Two, response time. The least amount of time equipment is exposed to a spike or surge, the better. Three, clamping voltage. Thor boards clamp at least 40% lower than any other brand we are aware of in the market. The less effective surge boards clamp at 500 volts or as high as 710 volts. Joules is a measurement of energy a surge protector can absorb. The higher the joule rating, the better the surge protector is. The larger the joules capacity means the bigger the surge it will survive. What happens every time a spike or surge attacks your device? You lose joules. Let us use the battery analogy to explain. When you lose joules, you lose protection just like a battery loses its charge. When you've got no more joules, you've got no more protection. 
Response time. No matter how good your surge protector is, if it doesn't react quick enough, it's useless. Thor models all react in less than one nanosecond. The best surge protectors will react in less than one nanosecond. The less effective brands will react much slower, 3, 5, or as low as 25 nanoseconds. Let's put response time into an example. If it takes 8 nanoseconds to fry a motherboard and your surge protector reacts in 25 nanoseconds, 16 nanoseconds later, your cheap surge board starts working. Of course, your motherboard is fried by now. So when your customer says, I will go to beep and buy a board, you want to pull them back and say, in my professional capacity, let me show you why you don't want to go and buy that board. Power in the suburbs. Did you know we have some suburbs sitting at 264 volts and other suburbs sitting at a low of 207 volts? What that means is that we have suburban streets and suburbs with too much high voltage power and areas of low or not enough power. Why is it like this? Well, let me explain. Here is a simple diagram. Imagine there is a power station supplying power to suburb 1, suburb 2, and suburb 3. Think of electrical power taking on the same characteristics as water. Water flow needs to be controlled to maintain pressure. Let's say there is a fire in suburb 3 that needs to be extinguished. What is needed from the main power station is a big hose pipe with a lot of pressure in the water pipe. The main water pipe is connected through suburbs 1, 2, and 3. In suburb 1 section of water pipe, Take out a knife and stab a hole in the main water pipe because there is a microwave connected. There is a fridge connected. Stab another hole. For a washing machine, stab another hole. And by the time we reach suburb 3, we have so many holes and there is no pressure and a lot of leaking water. Now we can't put the fire out. We also don't have enough voltage to run our appliances. Electricity works exactly the same way as the hose and water analogy. What the power utility does, if it needs to get 240 volts to that last suburb, suburb 3, it will punch out 290 volts to suburb 1. You don't want to live in suburb 1 because of the constant high voltage. Suburb 2 we are all going to move into because that suburb has perfect power, while suburb 3 has always got low power problems. This of course is a very simplistic example and the power utilities have put in substations to counter these sorts of challenges. But if kept in simple terms, that effectively is what's happening in our suburbs. What is a blackout? And what is a brownout? A blackout. Flick a power switch off, now there is absolutely no power. A brownout. You may notice suddenly the lights go bright, and then they go dim, and then they go bright. What's happened? The voltage is going high, then low. Probably because the power utility is having supply problems or an air conditioner, pull motor, or welder has been turned on. There's a common misunderstanding that with blackout or brownouts, power surge protection can't help. It is correct in one way, surge protection can't lift the power up, but what happens when low power comes back? It doesn't come back happy. It comes back angry and goes bang, 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 and then settles. This is when you need the surge protection that can clamp and keep your power's let through voltage at a safe level. How many times have you heard this sort of comment when recommending a surge protector or power filter to your customer? Don't worry about it, I have a board at home. Sure, it may still be working, but why not get the best possible performance out of the new system? If you bought a new car, would you put secondhand tires on it? No, of course not. Well, don't use a secondhand tire on your new home theater, hi-fi or computer system either, unless of course you want to get robbed of the best performance and experience it has to offer. Let our range not only protect, but improve your viewing and listening experience. Thor's range of products offer both protection and, as importantly, filtration for performance. That brings us to the end of this training segment. Thank you for your attention. Please feel free to visit our website or call us if you have any questions.